Hey everyone, I'm Juliet. And I'm Carl. And this is the Visionary Podcast. Where we talk all things eyes. Whether it's eyewear fashion from our collection Nuri Lens or trending eye health phenomena, we cover some of the things that people might not think about related to their eyes, but should. We'll explore hot topics in the world of eye health, talk to professionals in the field, and share stories of real people with real life experiences. We invite you to join us as visionaries looking toward a future with a clear view. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Juliette Nelson. Welcome to episode four in season two of the Visionary Podcast. I am here with my co-host, or I am his co-host. Carl, I'm here. (laughs) Um, And we are here with our second Visionary for the season. We are so excited. Please welcome Dennis Moranga. I'm here. How you doing? So we're bon. doing good. We're doing good. good. And we're so excited to have you here. Um, Dennis, and let me make sure I'm getting this right. Dennis is a comedian. He is an actor. He's a cultural producer. Um, he's also the founder of the Kicheco Project Foundation. It provides a range of resources um, spanning from medical, financial, legal, et cetera, et cetera, to support predominantly Afro-immigrant communities, especially in the Seattle area. Um, And we're going to get a little bit into that, but we're all the more excited because um, Dennis is close to our day one, like our day one and a half. You might have seen some of um, his face on some of our pictures that we posted. Um, He's also our ambassador. So he has um, styled a lot of Nuri Lenz's frames and we love how he brings his full self and his authenticity to our brand. He also popped up in our Pinterest live in our collaboration with them. And we had an amazing time where we kind of took viewers all around the world Um, to give them the story behind our frame. So we're super, super excited to have you, Dennis. Thank you again for being on our platform. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So our first question that we want to ask you, um, first and foremost, tell us a little bit about yourself, about the Kicheco Project, um, a little bit about what you, about what brought you into comedy, what brought you into serving the community, what are some of those things that really drive you and the vision um, that you live out today? I believe like for your talent, uh, for your skill set, uh, for your gift to actually manifest on earth mm-hmm. properly, it got to serve people. It yeah. has to pour into people and nourish people's spirits. I was born in Nairobi, Kenya. I lived majority of my life in the Midwest and mm-hmm. Kenya, Wichita, uh, predominantly very an African or unblack more white people live there. (laughs) And uh, I relocated to Seattle five years ago. And I never, in my whole entire 16, 17 year stay in the States, I've never been embraced by my people who look like me, my culture, embraced my story. In Kansas, in the Midwest, the culture there was more like, we were trying so hard to fit in, to Mm. assimilate, that we forgot that we had our own stories. Right. We had our own framework. We had our own history. And when I moved to Seattle is when this is like a full circle moment for me. Like when I'm around my people remind me of me and, and how I need to be proud of, of where I came from and what took to build me to where I was. I was a music producer. Mm. City. And when I moved to Seattle, I went through some life shifting moments. I think God was testing me. And in that moment, I found solace in expressing myself on stage differently now, not, not dancing, not rapping or whatever. It right. was acting. It was more like telling your story. But it's funny because, you know, at that time, Black people could not, the Black people in Seattle could not access uh, mental health uh, facilities. You could not go, therapists were like 250, 200, 300 an hour. You can't do that documented if you're not working so comedy became that avenue where we go and we tell people and we laugh and we connect to the audience and that's how i, I started building my brand as a comedian uh, five years ago Very nice. I, i'm grateful that i ended up working up with uh, a lot of great comedians in the country and in the state right. nate jackson mike epps uh michael blackson uh Very some nice. more uh, I've opened for a lot of people. I've worked with a lot of people. And just the, the fact that they embrace my story in the way I experienced it myself right. made me 
want to reach out to other people and see if they have their own stories mm. that they want to express in their own you know, there are refugees who ran away from from a war, like my wife who survived a, a whole war genocide in her country. Wow. There are people from Nigeria or Togo, Caribbean, Trinidad. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So when you bring all these people together and you tell them that I have a platform where we are not ashamed of our experiences no more. And we are not waiting for Hollywood to take pieces of our history, paste right. them to paper mache, then serve it to us. We... We tell it on our own terms. And that's what influenced me to create Kicheko Factory. And it later progressed to Kicheko Project. We're supporting schools in Africa, right. uh, uh, fundraisers, comedians who don't have resources, headshots for community leaders who have never taken a camera before. You know, those old people take wow. pictures down here. Right. You know, health <laughs> programs, taking our grandmother's mammograms, uh, bringing dentistry clinics to our neighborhoods, to people right. who, live, who are scared because they are undocumented or they're immigrants. And mm -hmm. especially if you're black, you know, if, if you watch the news, a lot of the times we talk about undocumented and immigrant people, it's never really black Jamaican, black Haitian, you know, right. it's always either Latin, you know, a little Ukraine there. So we are trying to push our presence in spaces that people didn't think we exist. Right. Yeah, that's that's my that's like if that was a goal, if I could sum up what I'm trying to do in Seattle, it's I want our visibility. I want us to be in the picture. That's it. No validation. I want us just in the conversation. I want our name to be right there. Like, Absolutely. That's all. That's Absolutely. It. And thank you for sharing that, Dennis. And we're going to once once we come back from our, our word from our sponsor, we want to ask you a little bit more about that, especially how it ties into vision health, because, of course, we we're two child of um, Haitian immigrants, two children of Haitian immigrants. And, you know, we also understand a lot of the challenges that come about in the Haitian community, among the Haitian diaspora. As you said, when you think of an immigrant, more than likely, you're not always going to think of your Afro-Caribbean or your African immigrant, your Black immigrant, right? You're more than likely going to think of Hispanic um, and, you know, Haitians are Latin American, but we don't get included in that conversation no. even, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when we think refugees, we give more, and, and this is, and I say this with grace, right? Because all refugees deserve safety, right? A human being deserves safety, Perfect. but we give more attention to more fair-skinned yeah. <laughs> refugees yeah. Yeah. than we yeah. give to those you know, and I've seen, you know, even with the coverage in Ukraine, there've also been coverage of you have people who are, you know, their tribes in Africa are experiencing genocide um, or violence and so on and so forth, even in Haiti, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of insecurity. Um, right. And those conversations are not amplified as much as other conversations are, right? Absolutely. And so yeah, yeah. the work that you're doing is super, super important. And I know it's Black History Month. So, you know, when we're looking at African-American communities, we also do not want to forget our other communities that are part of the African diaspora, right? Yeah. Those from the Caribbean, those who come immigrate, immigrate directly from Africa in today's day and age. So right. we, again, kudos to you and we honor you for the work and, and the way you also bring laughter to the culture, right? Um, right. That's something that's very important. So we also want to ask you, since you've been our ambassador extraordinaire, and you've been on some of our events, you've come to some of our photo shoots and so on and so forth. And it's so ironic because Dennis and I have so much in common and we didn't realize that. So I kind of, I, I think I found him on a site um, where we were trying to source people to appear in our photo shoots, myself and my photographer. And we found, I found Dennis and I loved how eclectic and expressive and loud your personality was. And I identified with that. And I was like, we need to have him in New Orleans' photo shoot. And I remember us having a pre preliminary call and you just came with all of this energy that kind of just broke the ice. And I think the rest is history. We now have just an amazing bond now, but with that being said, I would love to hear about your experience, you know, bringing yourself and your creativity to Nuri Lenz's brand. How do you like the frames? How does it feel? Um, what was your even experience, you know, appearing in our Pinterest live? Because that one, that one was a lot of fun. And we really enjoyed doing that with you and having you host that with us. So 
the floor is yours. What has your experience been like? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for like, I don't know why you looked for me. There were very many handsome <laughs> ebony chocolate, different types of macadamia in that website, but I don't know why you chose. <laughs> right. I was the only person with my silver streaks, more gray hair than Didi and DJ Kali put together, but I don't know why you chose me. Probably <laughs> the, the oldest in that group, but still, I don't know why you chose me, but I still thank you for it. I thrive in spaces where people don't turn down the amount of light in my chandelier lifestyle. It comes from a lot of suppressed energy while I was in the Midwest because I was told I was loud when I order coffee. I was loud on stage. Oh, wow. When we did that, when I'm trying to make people laugh backstage, people are like, no, don't do that, don't do that. So right. I felt like I was so whitened in my right. entire Midwest. And ever since I moved to Seattle, I always just want to work with people who let me be. Mm. I want to represent your brand in my most authentic self. Don't do yeah. that. Yeah. Let me show you where else we could take it to meet, to meet other crazy people like myself. Yeah. The outfits I pull in, you see my yellow suits and purple this. And I, I, I want to. That's where I want to take it. I know you want to take it here, but I want to take it here. Check this out. I got people I'm representing over here. And you allowed me to do that. Working with New Relance, you know, I met new creatives. I also made new friends through the collaborations of the photography of me and the photographer till today. Shout the out to Highlands Photography. Me and the some of the models, you see them in all my parties, Julie and them, they're always around me. So it kind of like created a family because it's like we are all we were all artists representing something, but we were all also missing something in our right. own life. We bonded past the product and behind the product shoots. Right, right, right. The story behind uh, the inception of these glasses, how you went to Asia, how you came back and what you're all about. This, the, what the brand is about, it's about how I feel today, my confidence, I owe it to how I want to look. Yeah. And the person I'm representing. So everybody who came over there, I felt they were on the same, like they were, they wanted the same thing. They wanted you to win. They wanted to look nice. They were posting without you asking. Right. No one right. was really doing the money. No one, everybody was like, we want our sister to win. The camaraderie behind it. And then it's different. It's like, it's not normal frames. Prime example, I didn't know why I didn't call you yesterday, but I was so tired. But the mayor of Bellevue almost took my glasses home yesterday. Really? That's awesome. Tell the mayor of Bellevue to call us. Yeah, we'll send him a pair. Or this yesterday. And, and I, I think, yeah, and I wore, I wore the big New York ones the time before we did the, the thing. And he's like, you coming here and I like this, you know, you gotta, you gotta tell me. And he's Asian, he's an immigrant too. And when you, when you approach spaces where people are picking a piece of walking Van Gogh on your face, you know, that's what right. they say. Like to them, it's right. like, yeah, I, want someone, I want, that to me is a conversation that breaks the ice for me. Yeah. Right in rooms, in spaces. And, and that's what I felt with the collaboration with New Relance. It opened uh, my eyes to vision health, which I never, like me and my, mine was the sunglasses. I got to look good at the club or at the right. stage. Nights more like, how, how do you, how you perceive when I do radio interviews, when I do podcasts? How am I right. perceived when I go to offices, but I don't, so don't want to look like super white casual. Yeah. Right? I, I want something that gives me that, hey, this is ours. It's like a dashiki for the eyes. Right, you can, right, right. You can take I that. I love it, a like that Yeah, that's what that's, you serve. Right. You have to use that. Yeah, so when I go, like when I wear New York frames, it gives a larger than life personality for me on stage. So mm -hmm. it amplified me. One of the yeah. comedians I really look up to is D.L. Hewley. I love his style. I just love his style. He embraces, right. he's honest to himself. He loves his... He, that iconic way he moves his frames in interviews, like he gave me that with New York frames. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on the general's look so that it's, it's a general. Like it right, has right, to. Be, right. I'm watching all of you at the same time. Right. Right. First accessory that I have that actually embraces my personality. Yeah. yeah. And you know it's interesting, bro, because I didn't. <laughs> I I remember saying, okay, which frames do you want me to send? And in my head, I saw all other, I saw so many different designs that would have gone with you. I would have chosen the lose for him. You know, 
the thing the blues look really good on him and the elwood city the thing that i first noticed because i didn't like i just saw you from like off of the photo shoot right and the one thing I noticed about you, I was like, he's not afraid to try on any pair of friends. None of them. I was he like, he didn't, all he didn't care. It's like, no, he was like, I want the New Yorks, uh-huh. and, which people I feel like normally shy away from the bigger, yeah. the bigger, badder friends. They're like, you yeah. know what? Maybe that's a little too much for me. Mm-hmm. Right. But I saw him. He was like, no, I'm, I'll wear He said New Yorks. I was like, he was like, they're bold. They're going to show my personality. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And really he. <laughs> But yeah, definitely, absolutely. We, I really, and I think that's what I absolutely love because I identify with that, right? We both identify with this. We were speaking about this last night. It's kind mm-hmm. of like people, you're almost, you're being perceived a certain way, mm-hmm. yeah. but you don't feel like you're being seen yes. as your truest self, right? You're having to always put on this persona or this seriousness. And it's not even that you have to put, you're trying to put on this persona. Sometimes it's just you keeping to yourself because you're not able to put on who you really are, right? You're not able to step out as your your full self. And so when you're in a space that allows you, and it's interesting, even the New Yorks, I had a pair of really big glasses and those were what inspired the New Yorks. And people used to laugh at me and say, oh no, you shouldn't wear these. No, 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 no. These are not good. These are not good. These never wear them again. Or they would say, oh, wow. You know, you came from regular screen TVs to now the big flat screen TVs. (laughs) And (laughs) you know, it's funny, but it was fun in games until I got into a horrible car accident. And I took, my face took a lot of the impact of an airbag. But what saved me was my big screen TV frame. It took all of the impact from the airbag. So for me, it was like, listen, you know, some people might think, oh, it's too much. It's too bold. But for me, it's done a lot. And so not thinking much, I'm like, okay, let me design something, right? That I can put as part of the collection. And so it warms my heart to see that the more eclectic, the more funky styles, those are the ones that you picked up that some of the other models picked up. Mm -hmm. And really you all made it your own. It wasn't, oh, I'm going to look like Juliet or I'm going to look like this person. It was you, General Matumbo, stepping out as your authentic self. And and, uh, to piggyback on that, uh, my community, one of the things when I grew up, I wanted to be so, I wanted to be African-American so bad as a kid. Like I used to look up to the courage, the expressiveness, the realness, because in Africa, a lot of countries, politically, we are bullied by the elite. Mm. So people are very timid, unless you're Nigerian, okay? East Africa, they're very timid. Right. And uh, when we go into spaces, we we approach spaces more like people pleasers, not people who want to, occupy the room yes right we don't come in as thank you i'm part of the conversation we come in as thank you for allowing me being here so the energy with my brand with my nonprofit, now our collaboration uh with nudity lens i wanted when i step into a space i'm not stepping as a timid african i'm i'm stepping as dubai this is my leave everything else away from me Yeah. yeah This is what I'm bringing to the table. When you see take pictures of you, you're like, yes, what do you see? Exactly. That's what I want you to see. And Africans leave other things outside the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's your fullest self. And unfortunately, that's what the diaspora does. (laughs) We try to fit in. Mm -hmm. Um, And African American culture is beautiful, right? They are beautiful just as they are. But there's also a a beauty that we bring, right? You're from the motherland, you're from Kenya. You from the motherland, you see what I mean? So that beauty doesn't, you, you having to adjust who you are and and you are that place that we call home, right? Yeah. Our first yeah. home, you know, it's always nice to be able to maintain and straight, stay true to who we are, right? Um, yeah. Because we are beautiful just as we are. So again, we we are so grateful that you proudly wear Nuri Lenz's frames. You represent the brand so well. <laughs> And of course, we, that is our mission, right? To encourage people to step out as their best authentic selves, to see through the lens of your purpose, not ours, but yours, who you are and all that you are. So we're so grateful and we're so excited to see you continue evolving, especially with the Kicheko project, which which we'll speak a little bit more about later. 
So now we're going to go into our next segment, which is Carl's yeah. favorite segment, um, the sec- which is um, who's wearing what. And this is our segment where we choose a well-known figure and we select a pair of frames, a new lens frames that we think would look well with him or her. All right. So with that being said, our first vision, our second visionary of the season, Dennis, he's selected D.L. Hughley. He's another comedian. He is, um, he does it for the culture. I will say that he's bold. He stays true to himself, to his beliefs, and he can care less what you think about it, right? Which is what I also admire about him. So we're going to let you go first, Dennis. Which pair of frames from the Nui Lens collection would you style D.L. Hughley with? First, because of his face and how much I see he likes big frames, I'll go first with New York frames, second with Cairo. Those two okay. are okay. I'll play with him. Then you guys can decide which other ones you think he can play with. But New York, definitely he'll he'll kill New York, man. He already looks like he wears New York type of frames Style, or frames. Yeah. 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 He I likes just... all that red and they're green and sometimes they're expensive like Gucci with an yeah. undertone. Sometimes they're just regular Costco ones, but they still, I love that. And then his whole look, the beard, and then his hair. So it's yeah. about his dick down, but from the neck up, ah, he's a rebel. Nelson, I see it. I see it. I see it. And you know what? I wouldn't, I would have chosen the Lou's mm-hmm. for him, the okay. ebony Lou. And I could that, even see him in the does. silver oak Lou. You see? Yes. Okay. That would be good. Because, but Because I, I think his personality is just that expressive. Yeah. And so while I do feel like the ebony Lou goes very well, and I, I just love how wood looks on melanin skin. Mm-hmm. So I think the Lou's would go so well with his complexion. But I think the silver oak, it gives a pop to his personality. Silver oak, yeah. I think the silver oak, I think that's where I'm leaning. You towards. would agree with me? Yeah. You're finally no, agreeing not, with me today. I'm not agreeing with you because you picked the ebony. You, you picked the ebony. Yeah. You picked the silver oaks second. No, 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 but I picked the silver oaks first. Silver. We have a, there's a distinct. Silver oaks, silver um, oaks, clear, clear, clear lenses, right? So you can see through the interview because he doesn't wear dark shades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're clear if lenses. anything, we'll give him the transitions. When he steps yeah. outside, they yeah, turn into exactly. sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. I like that. I think the silver oaks definitely allow, uh, they're more expressive than the ebony's, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. the ebony for him is a little too safe. Yeah, too um, safe. I like it with his complexion. That's why I would select it for mm-hmm. him. But I do yeah. agree. I think the New Yorks and, and the, the Cairo's, Cairo's yeah. they're just, they're bright. They're mm-hmm. bold. And I think that would be a stronger display of um, his personality. I could definitely see that, like a red carpet event, like he's exactly you know, right. So, yeah. yeah, that's a that's an easy New York or one of his stand up events. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Luke Hughley, call us. Yeah, <laughs> call us. <laughs> call us. Call them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna take. We're gonna hear a word from our sponsor, and technically we are the sponsors, but we're gonna <laughs> hear a word from our sponsors, and we will be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Nuri Lens, a handcrafted wooden eyewear company. We offer a number of vision and eyewear solutions, whether non-prescription or prescription. Nuri Lens combines style, performance, and sustainability by creating an experience that encourages self-expression, impact, and improved vision health. Visit www.nurilens.co for more information. Episode four of the Visionary Podcast. Again, we are here with our second Visionary of season, Dennis Moranga. And before we went to break, we were able to speak about some of the projects that he's working on and so on and so forth. Of course, our podcast focuses on vision and eye health. And so that's what we have him here to talk about today. So I was scrolling on Instagram, um, not sleeping usually, 
and I noticed <laughs> I noticed that Dennis had posted up a shot of him at the eye doctor and really emphasizing the importance of us going in to get our eye exam. First and foremost, do you have an update on whether you've gotten your eyes checked yet? Because I don't. Back to Dennis. No? no okay. I have no update. We, we are so ashamed, Dennis. But we owe it. We owe it to, to our viewers. So our listeners, Please. our viewers, Please. Uh, to go get our eyes checked. Yeah, we will. We're but nevertheless... Out. He did emphasize the importance of eye health. And so instead of Dennis writing a Nuri letter anonymously, he was brave enough to come and share his experience. So again, thank you for willing to be transparent and vulnerable with us and sharing with our listeners and our viewers what your experience is, is and was. So please share with us what were the symptoms that you were experiencing that told you, okay, I need to go to the eye doctor and get this checked out. The light light on my cornea so it started with night driving right okay. i i trucks i drove trucks for a living like eight six seven years ago okay and it wasn't that bad but uh then you know back in your 20s you're always in the nightlife you're traveling places it was it was cool but uh eight months ago i started noticing i have problems driving at night uh when i'm driving i feel like when people are driving on the opposite direction, incoming traffic. It's like the beams land on my face, on my eyes, and they're reflective. I feel like I have to wear sunglasses at night mm. inside yeah. the car, which right. is dangerous, especially it's when it's dangerous. Great. Yes. In my problem, I would slow down. My wife would complain that I'm driving like an 80-year-old driver. Like, What's up with you driving 20 on a 40? I'm like, you, right. you can't. And then the topography of Washington State is very hilly. Okay. So like Seattle is down here, Renton is up here, Federal Way is up here. So you're coming down hills every time. Right. And then you, the city, you're going up hills. Then we have, we have uh, Seattle, we have twin cities. So we have Bellevue City mm -hmm. and Seattle City, which is connected by a bridge. Okay. This bridge over this Pacific Ocean, you're driving at night, you look wrong or you miss, a, you miss something, you're going to end up inside the ocean. So I started right. feeling like becoming a health risk for me. Yeah, right. yeah. And so I went to a, an optom, op, optometrist, say it to me, give it to me, optometrist. optometrist, I'm still learning English, English came by plane, I landed by boat, uh, so optometrist, and uh, because I'm not yet uh, legally allowed to work uh, in the country, I had to look for a good deal, which I'm, right. if anybody's listening to me as a document or as an immigrant, look for a lot of clinics that offer free services. Uh, it, it might be a little longer line because a lot of people need the service, but it's not ghetto, just go over there. It's better right. to get good, good free health than none at all. Yeah. So right. when um, Costco is offering something, uh, optometrist there, they're affordable, even if you don't have insurance. So I, my, uh, I took my old lady there. My old lady also had uh, vision health problems. Actually, she's the one who encouraged me to go because hers is more like an old age thing because she's like 65. Okay. And in a new frames. So we went to the optometrist. So funny that we booked the appointment at the same time. Same doctor, wow. same doctor, so you got the same thing. Thank you for both of you for coming. He prescribed the same glasses. He told us we have the same condition, which is hereditary. So yes. wow. grandfather had it, but he didn't know because he never wore glasses. My grandmother has it. My brothers will have it. I have four brothers, so a family of five. Okay. It, the condition is called granular corneal dystrophy. So they are set deposited on the outside layer of your cornea and this sediments instead of letting light come into i know my doctor brother you know what i'm talking about that how they come in so yeah. this sediments bounce the light back out mm. yes yeah so the so you, you the way you're perceiving it it's, it's attacking your eyes you feel temporarily blinded by large beams of light and also it affects your reading at night so we're talking uh signs Wow. Traffic lights. We are talking making exits. When if you live in a big city, you, you know what I'm saying? We're talking animals that can come into traffic that you may not see that can cause an accident. Wow. Yeah. Talking pedestrians who are not wearing light reflect reflective material. Cyclists. So what looks like a little minute problem might end up costing you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You put lack of sleep or fatigue, tiredness, and then you put this sediments reflecting lack outside, not a good combo. Right. You are yeah. a drunk driver, 
almost the same thing in a bad day. No, it, uh, definitely at night it's bad with uh, granular uh, corneal dystrophy. It's like the, the deposits are forming like in between the layers of your cornea because there's like a there's many layers essentially. Mm -hmm. right? okay. yep. And like you were saying, where light's supposed to be coming into your eye, it's supposed to be there's supposed to be a focal point and it's supposed yeah. to hit a, a specific point in the back of Correct. your eye, mm -hmm. right? Correct. With all those deposits, they're now causing like different refractions. Mm. So especially at night. Um, like you're saying, where you're driving and it's already low light and people, other cars, oncoming traffic, they're, they're trying to see, they're putting on their, their high beams, the brightest light so they can see. Now you on the other side of the road, it, it, can, get, it can get very dangerous. So yeah, that's uh, like you said, and it's important to, to get, get your eyes checked because if, if you don't go in, like you said, you're not going to find out about what's going on. You're not going to figure out what's happening. And you're driving one day, the deer hops out the road, you know? So it's important to keep up with these things. Yeah, definitely. And also, as especially uh, us as people of color, because of, you know, lack of resources to like, you know, right. visit health places, health centers, uh, like other our fellow colleagues or whatever, uh, we don't get to know what's hereditary, whether we pass to our kids, what we are giving to yeah. houses. We don't get to know what disease is because some of these diseases I'm discovering that I didn't even know we, it ran through the family. Now, when you discover them, whether it's dental or vision health, you are able to like tell your bros, hey, something's coming up. So something's coming. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. In this, when this happens, don't be the guy who gets into a situation and then we have to get lawyers to prove that, oh my God, it was based on and which will not work in your favor systematically. We are not placed in a place where we can use health as a reason to get out of things so right and i mean that's something me and juliet talk about all the time about like and you guys touched about it earlier just about the importance of like representation right and mm -hmm. just like knowing that like okay if there's a doctor that i feel like i can trust and i that's gonna have my best interest in mind then i am more likely as an immigrant of whatever like african country or the caribbean country they're more likely to feel comfortable going to see to get checked get their dental health get their eyes checked you know because that just kind of there's a lack of trust i think in the medical field um a lot of times yeah. Especially, and people, and people have associated healthcare with with success. Like some people feel that good health belongs to wealthy people. Yeah, and that's been very transparent with my doctor visits. Whether I go to the dentist, I'm always posting. Whether I'm going to the chiropractor, I'm always posting. Mm -hmm. Whether I, when I go to mental health, I used to tell uh, every time I remember calling Julie all the time. I went to my therapist. I want it to. And you know, I'm always holding you accountable. This is thing. I love it. I yeah. love saying I get help. I mm -hmm. love saying I love good help. We yeah. show when we go to nice restaurants, we're having good food. Right. We love showing when we go to Bahamas or vacations. We love showing that. Yes. But what yeah. about the real flex? Right. We buy the cars, we, we get oil changes, nice rims, nice interior, whatever, but we never show this bad. Mm -hmm. We show exercise, yeah. but we don't show, yeah, we need regular maintenance, bro. How are your ears? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yo, 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 your back. <laughs> yo, yo, how's your teeth? You keep talking, bro. When's the last time you went and got them flushed? How's yeah. your eye? <laughs> When's the last time you checked? Maybe you're single because you don't want to go to the doctor to fix whatever you keep collecting. <laughs> that might so, be it. Oh my so gosh. It brings it full circle. Like, hey, this is a doctor. And I admit that yeah. uh, with this body, I still need help to make it function. And right. there's some going to school for this and maybe I'm not doing it for me I'm doing it for my mother I'm doing it for my wife and I don't know who you're influencing because influencer is not only like on fashionable stuff yeah influence yeah. on sustenance yeah where do you get your your charisma from I tell right. myself get checked I I'm confident in this aspect which kind of counterbalances on this aspect right. so yeah, you don't have you can't walk around in fear right go in these spaces find out if yeah. I didn't have the situation, we'd have never had this podcast. We'd have no right. help. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, so, and, and you know, know. for black people too. That's another thing. Even by the time the, opt the, the optometrist is, trying, is like telling you, this is what you have. You're like, this does not sound African. What do you say? Granular what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what? 
the first of all was Dennis. Y'all needed we we need to fly out to see yeah, Dennis. I need to see a show. I'm in, con- in, in concert. Yeah. His comedy concert. End of story, mm-hmm. right? It's already booked. We're going. I need to go. <laughs> We're going. That's number one. <laughs> but number two, I'll say this. And we said this on a previous episode about glaucoma, right? Where the highest number of cases that you'll find with patients with glaucoma yeah. is in African-American, Black, and Latino communities. Correct. And the reasons that you find them progressing so much is because of the fact that we don't, as you said, we are not proactive about our health, mm-hmm. right? Or more than likely because in our cultures, we're so spiritual, right? Mm-hmm. We're yes. going to, we're going to seek prayer or we're always leaning on traditional medicine, which is right. not bad, right? Yeah. But you also, if there are people who specialize, right, in eye health, in vision health, in teeth, in this, in that, go and get checked. Yeah. Go and get checked because what happens now is people are not going to get their eyes checked and I'm guilty of it. People are not going to get their eyes checked. And what happens is by the time an issue happens, for example, you're sharing the symptoms you have. So what happens is they're noticing, they can't see, they're noticing they're having trouble driving at night, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they finally go into the eye doctor and they see that their condition has progressed so much. It's, it, a lot of the times it's too late. It's too late yeah. and they can't be proactive about it. Yeah. And so these conversations are so important. Um, not only about eye and vision health, right? About dental health, right? Um, You mentioned that once upon a time you wanted to be a dentist, right? And again, we always go when our teeth are aching. We don't go, you know, Mm -hmm. the same way. And you've mentioned it about mental health. That's That should be something where you're always just taking a pulse, Mm -hmm. right? How am I doing, right? And speak to someone who can help you navigate that. It doesn't always mean that you have to go and get medicine, right? And I know West Indians, we say... God is my doctor. Yes. <laughs> right? God is my doctor, castor oil and, and leaves and, and herbs and so on and so forth. But going to just get a checkup to confirm that however Maybe. you think you feel is actually what it actually is. So mm-hmm. that now you can be proactive. If we are going to do traditional medicine or whatever it is, if we are going to change our diet and so on and so forth, at least we might know, hey, your high blood, pre- your blood pressure is a little high, right? Correct. Or your sugar levels are a little low or high, or we're finding these different things so that we can now say, okay, if I'm going to do herbs, right, and so on and so forth, at least I can be proactive about it and mm-hmm. not allow it to progress so much that mm-hmm. now I can't return from this. Correct. And I either have to have surgery yeah. or I just have to deal just with it. Just the treatment options can be. Yeah, bad. correct. Right. So let me ask you this about your eye condition, and you need to repeat the name for me again. It's granulocorneal dystrophy granular corneal dystrophy and carl you might be able to answer this for me dennis mentioned how this condition is hereditary Mm -hmm. right is this something that is common in black and african-american or afro-caribbean or african communities or is is it just free for all it's it's hereditary, so it's definitely going to follow a specific like, a specific, like a genealogy. Lot. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I I think it's due to like it a slight mutation and uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mutation. Okay. Correct. Um, that comes through uh, either uh, uh, either passing down from father to child or mm-hmm. spouse uh, when yeah. you your kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. hereditary. So, there's potential that it can stay in com- in in certain communities longer than like you see what I'm saying. Right, it can have more others. prevalence in in some communities. Correct. I'm not sure about the the full like schematics of it, but right. um, it definitely can definitely like it can have prevalence in in certain communities. Copy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's interesting because this month, February, is Low Vision Awareness Month, and so oh, no. these are the conversations we want to have to really understand you know, what are some of these diseases or these eye illnesses that do impact our communities, especially again, as you said, if it's hereditary and Carl, as you mentioned, if it's hereditary, it does have a chance to pass on throughout the community Correct. because more than likely, you know, we, we are, when we procreate, right. When we reproduce, it's going to more than likely be within our community. So those genes get passed on. So I did have a question. So you said you went with your mother, right. And she, is this the first time she found out about this or so? Yeah. Yeah. Right, you see? Wow. So it's like, and not to, and like, she has an eye doctor. Yeah. If she had known, 
she not she could have prepared you and like as you said like your brothers right. similarly to be like hey because i think it's it's around like 20 30 years that you start seeing the those deposits Correct. become more noticeable yeah. so like if she had known earlier she could have like she would have been able to tell you hey something's coming you know what i'm saying so be prepared for that and when it does when it does happen like you're you're not too shocked you're not like man i don't know what this is but i'm just going to ignore this and and just you know keep driving and and putting putting your your life in danger per se you know and, that, and that's the importance uh, uh, uh that's the importance of us as this generation being able to step into that space that our parents, uh, unfortunately, some of them did not step into that space. Yeah. That way we uh, protect our future generation by being a step ahead in, in, in like dictating our health. You know what I'm saying? Step ahead in finding out what could make our life expectancy longer. Yeah. What we could stop, like healthcare, it's, it's key, man. It's We could save a lot of our people as soon as, you know, if we could di diagnose some things that are running through the family early. No, definitely. I, I, I agree with that. Um, like just trying, like being the generation that wants to look into these things and figure these things out for the future yeah. generations, I think is, is extremely important. It's um, important. important. But okay. now we're yeah. going to our next, and I do want to ask, I do want to ask this one question um, and tie it into the Kicheko project. I really want you to give us your perspective on the importance of, especially from your experience, being proactive about checking your eye health. And I know you said that you do provide medical services um, to the Afro-immigrant diaspora, the Afro-immigrant community, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. So could you speak a little bit about those services that you do provide to the community and how you partner with other nonprofits to serve Afro-immigrant communities? So uh, in uh, King County, which is our county in Seattle, uh, they have different they have different organizations that they try to leverage how much taxes they pay back to the government by okay. putting to different organizations that take care of you know Spanish community, Chinese community, African community. So I stepped into that space to see how they could find Africans visible when they're distributing resources. Okay. Example. Uh, when COVID happened, when COVID hit us, the pandemic, they had the vaccination clinics, but nobody would host it. Remember, a lot of people in my community are paranoid. They'll right. take the, everybody else. They, they want to do this eye clinics and mammograms after everybody else. So I started bringing it through concerts. We rent out a hall. I mm -hmm. have people come there. We entertain them. I have bands, comedians, open mic type of area, uh, paintings and everything. Then we have those professionals come and educate the people who are coming to my concert on the importance of participating in some of these clinics. I came to find out that there's a demographic of immigrants that are totally invisible to everybody in the state. Wow. These are people who live, uh, who work in the nursing and healthcare fields, especially our old parents. And this, uh, they call them the live-in, live-in nurses. Mm -hmm. So live in there for like a week or two or three. Some of them lived in, live in there with the patients for like six months. Uh, yeah. Some of them have gone to Africa in like three years, four years, 10 years, 12 years of living with our family. So we bring these programs around them. We bring mm -hmm. food and tell them the importance of them knowing what's going on with their eyes. Because most of them used to go to Walmart and just buy glasses or Dollar right. Tree. Just right. grab anything. And then they don't know they are, excuse my French, they are effing up their, their sight more right. by getting their wrong glasses, assuming mm -hmm. like my old lady used to think she can't read, she needs glasses that amplify everything and blow everything right. out. She just had what I had. Right, right. Yeah. Going in. So self-diagnosing. Finding out what's really wrong with you, if there's anything wrong with you. Maybe it's a light right. issue. Maybe it's right. a... It's a, you know what I'm saying? It's, it might not, it might be a dust issue, maybe your environment. Right. You don't wash your eyes very well. You don't shower, you don't clean them very well. Maybe it's an eye drop thing. Maybe it's an allergy thing. I found out I'm allergic to cats. When I'm mm. around, it's quite a bit and my eyes get really teary and red. Yeah. Wow. How the spectrums of like, what, what, how, how are you? Like, you gotta get checked. Like, it's just like a car. You, you got right. your eyes, but in the body, it comes out later in life. Right. So, we come, we set up camp somewhere. 
right music food and the, i know it sounds like we're bribing people but now nah, africans we love food so if they come in oh west indians do too do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there and it's, it's like a little festival but it's a festival right. of, of like hey trust us i know yes. some of us come from lands where whenever we saw clinics we knew we were guinea pigs mm -hmm. we knew right. yes things were not even allowed in america huh some of the medicines we grew up with amoxicillin are not even legal in america right we were being injected and pumped with stuff that was not working for us we right. find necessary diseases down the line disability diseases you find out some of the medicines that were being administered within a certain period of time caused you know what i'm saying like like really long term body health negative issues down the line and i know some of you're stuck in that space uh when we were fighting polio when we were fighting ebola you believe right. sometimes but now we're in a different place and the platform we are the healthcare uh foundations that we have they give equal whatever we have is what americans have whatever they give us what our white people have and right now it comes to also uh the fact that the trust issue you're talking about would right. you prefer a doctor would you prefer a black doctor you prefer an indian doctor because there's also a stigma i don't know about the caribbean but i'll tell you about east africa that some of our parents believe that if the doctor is not white you don't really trust them all the way being honest with you guys yeah, and you got um, yeah that a doctor is a doctor bro mm -hmm. i know you're old school and i know in the bibles the bible that you read still says jesus is looking like somebody from alaska i get it but you look like somebody like me i know you don't believe it i know you don't want to believe it and this notion of savior who looks a certain way applies to your doctor to the guy who sells you a car yeah you're fighting it you're fighting people who look like you are trying to help you right yeah. you, this was done by reynard bonke or joel westin you don't want it to be dubai but right. this is god sent to me i'm the dubai right. i'm the joel westin now i got to bring right. this to you. This is how it's supposed to be. Get off that horse and start like re revise how mm -hmm. you revise yeah. how you you see therapy and vision health. Revise yeah. when a fellow person is telling you I'm going through it. I'm not your enemy. Right. Um, maybe you don't want the help but somebody you know might use the help. Might need it, right? Yeah, yeah and that's what Kicheko tries to bridge. Absolutely. And and we're so grateful again um that you came on our platform and and shared that and shared and we're grateful for the work that Kicheko is doing because even though you're doing it in Seattle um and we do hope that you know you're able to get the resources where you can expand beyond Seattle um and Definitely. expand beyond Washington state but you know that that shows the impact right of the work that you do because that's something that really is needed right there is a lack of trust and sometimes our trust is very distorted right mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we choose who we think has our best interest. Um, so basically these conversations, these resources, um, and how you're, you're really placing strategically placing access to these resources for the community where they can feel that sense of belonging, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's one thing about our culture. We love to come together as a family, as a community. And so you bringing the community together, whether it's through comedy, whether it's through food, right? But saying here are other resources we have for you um, so that you can stay proactive about your health um, is super, super important. So again, we are so grateful um, that you you came on our podcast. Um, Carl, do you have any last words no, um, for Dennis? No, I've, I'm just really enjoying the conversation. Like overall, thank you once again for coming on to, to the podcast. You're um, welcome. You, you're, what you represent, I think is like important. I love that you you feel um, like our you can express yourself wearing our frames. Um, so once again, thank you. You're welcome. And thank you guys for also being like just your niche with your podcast is important yeah. and curve your way through it. Just keep putting the messages out there. And, you know, health is, a, is really our real flex. We we speak constantly about black don't crack, but we crack ourselves sometimes. We do. We, yeah. If we don't crack, it has to spice. We were talking early on our break about air fryers, like an air fryer. It's amazing, but you need to clean it. You got to empty that oil. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta this maintenance to everything you like. And if yep. you don't make the body, that black will just crack like every other cracking thing out there because yep. Yep. Right. 
diligence, you're washing your face and, and you know, just sustenance. Right. Maybe it's right. not for you. Uh, maybe it's not good for you, but pass it to other people who might need the info. Uh, right. When there's picnic somewhere, whether it's free or if you could afford, that's good as well. Um, right. Use your 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 platform. Uh, you Absolutely. got your uh, if you went to the dentist, if you went to the eye doctor, if you went to the bone doctor, be able to share so that people can see we go to doctors. This is right. not, you don't need to hurt. Yeah, treat you like you're going to, yeah, treat it like you're going to Chick-fil-A. Like just go there and get told something. Just It's good, right. the nice people there. Actually, the visits that you go when you're not hurting are kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. You're patient. You're more empathetic. Mm-hmm. You and the doctor have a different relationship. Like yep. it's more like, okay, I see improvements here. It's good. Yeah. Home. Yeah. There's no investment like investing in your health. So absolutely. So I I'll tell everybody, get the frames and go to the doctor. Or go to the yes. doctor, get the frames. Get your eyes checked. Go to the show. And, <laughs> and, and, and go see Dubai in Cairo. Yeah, cut the show too, bro. Go. Hey, and D.L. Hewley, cut the check. I mentioned you three times in this interview. <laughs> yeah. He needs his commission. <laughs> yes, we're here for that. All right, so now it's time for our favorite, our mm-hmm. favorite segment. Are you ready, girl? I'm ready. Bro, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so this is the best segment, okay, where we tell an eye-related joke. Okay. okay. <laughs> Don't look at my phone. I'm not. You didn't see it? Okay. So, so the question is, what do you call a fish with no eyes? Wait, 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 wait. A fish with no eyes. No. You, you should get this. No eyes fish. Uh, blind trout? No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um. <laughs> He said a blind trout. <laughs> or, uh, that might be better than whatever you're going to say, obviously. Blind trout or... Uh, uh, oh, my God. Okay. A blind trout or... Animals in the water. Fish with no eyes. Ah, fish have to... I don't know. Help me out. I don't know. I can't think a of A fish with no eyes is visually <laughs> impaired. <laughs> oh, fish with no eyes. I didn't even go there. Uh, you don't get it? Visually? 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 visually. <laughs> visually impaired. It's a humpback which is visually impaired. Instead of having that big thing where, you know, my wife, Jonah was struck by a fish. Visually impaired. Visually impaired. That was good. That was that good. Was good. That was good. That was bad. That was not good. That was not a good joke. That was good. He doesn't that like good. that joke. That was good. Thank you. Juliet five. Carl negative Juliet five. five. <laughs> I, I never make a fair score count. Anyway, again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, eye health is wealth as well. Be proactive. Like the Chick-fil-A say, the people at Chick-fil-A say, make it your pleasure to be able to go and be proactive about having healthy eyes health. and right. vision health and make sure, and we will drop all of his links um, and, and links to his social media platform, et cetera, et cetera. But make sure you check out Dennis Maranka um, and the Kacheco Project and all the amazing work that they're doing. Thank you so much, Juliet, signing out. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you again for tuning into the Visionary Podcast. We hope that you receive some nuggets that will help you make better decisions about your eye health. Anything we've discussed in this episode should not be taken as medical advice. If you have any questions or concerns about your own personal health, please reach out to your doctor. If you like what you've heard, feel free to leave us a review with your feedback. Also, feel free to visit our website at www.nurilens.co for your next pair of frames. We offer non-prescription and prescription options with different features to fit your style and vision needs. Enjoy 20% off your purchase with the code VISIONARY20 today. Remember to see through the lens of your purpose, and we look forward to chatting with you next time.